Voilà, doucement. Très bien, doucement. Frédéric Pignon has always been fascinated by animals. Very early on, as a child, he learned to communicate with horses as you would with a domestic pet. Today, Frédéric has the best job in the world. Putting on a show with his majestic horses, he makes people dream. Frédéric has an unconditional love and respect for horses, and they return it in spades. In general, the horse is an animal who likes to follow. It's an animal that feels well in itself when it has a guide, when someone else takes decisions. And I want to be the person who takes decisions. An artist renowned throughout Europe and America for taking part in several shows such as Cheval Passion and Cavalia, Frédéric shares his vision of horses with Magali Delgado, his partner in life and on the stage. I wait until my dressage horses reach physical, intellectual and psychological maturity, till the whole horse is ready to accept what I ask of it. And inevitably, we have a different relationship because we never force them. We never make them do it. After two months of shows, Frédéric and Magali are glad to return to their farm at Lille-sur-la-Sorgue in Provence. They're thrilled to see their protégés, colts just beginning their training. Look at his Spanish walk. Yes, you've got talent. Just like your father, aren't you? <laughs> These are the coming stars. Frizoui. With Frizoui, we're taking him gently through his steps because he's a year old. So we do a little step and then stroke him. What they really like is to be scratched. So at the same time, we teach him simple things. He learns new things gently. It really is like a child going to infant school and learning simple things. A colt will naturally do the opposite of what you want. If I pull here, he either wants to go off there or to draw back. I want him to step forward, and he steps back. It's not a problem. At first, I step back with him, and we try to harmonize our wills. There, he took a step forward. That's good. Now he takes two steps back. That's it. He's made progress until he sees that it's all done easily. All the important work, all the important education is done here, laying down the basis. Frédéric and Magali have around 50 horses from the Delgado family farm. As far back as Magali can remember, horses have been part of her daily life. Her parents, great horse lovers, bred them and put on equestrian shows in which little Magali would take part. The horse was always our priority. When we got home from school, we had to go and look after our own mare. We'd help our parents feed the horses until late in the evening, and our lives revolved around horses never the other way around. So it's been in the family since I was small. It's a passion they gave us, and I see it as a great gift. When parents can pass on a passion like that to their children, it's the finest gift in the world. We didn't have horses when we were young, but we already had this passion for the horse within us. We lived in this kind of atmosphere where the horse became a big mystery. Horses were something extraordinary and to us symbolized great freedom. At the same time, my parents were pretty enthusiastic, I guess. Born in Normandy, Frédéric inherited a deep love of horses from his father. 
On Sunday outings, they'd often visit horse fairs, fascinated by manes in the wind. One day, Frederic attended a show in which Perdigon was the big star. This show, Cheval Passion, would be a major turning point in his life. It was the first time I saw Père Dugan, and I met Magali in that routine in Cheval Passion. And I say the horse because he was extremely well known, more so than Magali at the time, because in the horse world, he was a worldwide legend. This meeting brought Frédéric into contact with a world that fascinated him. He was won over by the Delgado method, which adopted a respectful approach to the horse, unlike methods often used in the equestrian world, which are based on domination of the animal. You see, he's gained strength since last time. He propels himself well now, he's really pushing. We have this philosophy which in fact has often worked against us. At first, we really were seen as the ugly ducklings of the profession. People didn't see us as trainers. We were weird people because we spoke to our horses. To Frederic, the horse is a mysterious animal with an unpredictable character. Communicating with it involves a very strong desire to understand. His approach, based on gentleness and patience, enables Frederick to establish a real rapport with his horses. However, the dramatic results he obtains are entirely deserved. Delgados, horses are a family affair. Pierre and Joël own a business breeding Lusitano horses. Their farm is a veritable nursery where Frédéric and Magali select the most promising horses. All four are driven by the same passion. We have a love story with animals in general, a little more with horses. And our whole lives have been built around the love and the respect that we bring to them. We have the same ideas. We want horses to be happy in our home and we strive for that. In fact, we moved to this estate just so they'd have more well-being and so we're all together and on the same page. We always try to be in agreement and now we admire them. So anything we can do to help them, and they're the same. They do what they can to help us. So we're very complimentary. That's what family is. It's a real family. He's cute because he's still interested. I'm working on his attention now, making him attentive. Attentive to me, my movement. There, because now he's understood that. We step back, we step forward. He copies the action just like they do naturally in a herd when they put their trust in the leader of the herd. They say, okay, I can trust him. If he goes there, then I can go too. That's what I want to teach him, to make me his right-hand man. Since they've been doing this job, Frédéric and Magali have taught several dozen horses, each with their own character and aptitudes. With some of them, they have forged very strong bonds. When you look at a horse like Templado, how can you explain his career? I don't know. Because morphologically, he was a well-built horse, a handsome horse. But there are better built, more handsome horses maybe. But Templado had a strength, an inner beauty, a charisma. I remember when he arrived on stage at the gallop, 
You'd hear the silence, and people would go, whoa. These are real artists. They're horses with something to say. And I know they're horses who come to talk to people, to say things to people. So I think the horse's character makes the difference. I think that we were both really lucky to find our mentor, whether with Templado or Dao. And they didn't come into our lives by chance, those two horses, because without them we wouldn't have our philosophy about work, and we were lucky to have them very young. They're horses who really guided us. When I rode Dao, I felt like the slightest mistakes were corrected. I'd think, no, you're on the wrong track there. Not like that. You have to do it like this. And you're demanding because I'm not fast enough. Hang on. I'm baking an apple tart, okay? I'm not feeding you any more than this. And you're being cheeky with your head inside the house. You know you won't be coming in. Are you enjoying your retirement? Nice being at home, isn't it? What do you think? It's vacation time, you guys. You better believe it. Cedric Texier is an equestrian artist. A close friend of Frédéric and Magali, together they form a team. Today, he's returning two of the stars of the tour of shows he's just presented in Belgium. The horses are true. They can't fake it. If we're a little tired and we have a show to do, you think, okay, it's time to wake up, and you do the show, and you're still on top of things. I'll perform just as well. If the horse is tired, he won't want to play as much. Yes, he'll, he'll make an effort too. The horse will find Frederick. He'll say, oh yes, my mate is here. We'll play. But he won't play with the same intensity, the same energy as if he was rested, even though he's glad to see Frederick. Games are the bedrock of our work. Because to us, games have that connotation of pleasure, as opposed to work, which has a more laborious connotation. But it doesn't mean the horse shouldn't also know the meaning of work in his daily life. So we always manage to link the work to pleasure, which always makes a horse pleasant, a horse that says yes. Because often the problem in traditional equitation is that you're in conflict with horses who say no. Our question is, how do you bring them round to saying yes all the time? And in our work, in the way we build our relationship, we end up having horses who say yes to us. I remember seeing Narcado arrive in California, and he must have been around three years old. And Frederick was working with him, just building a relationship with him for almost a year. He built a relationship of trust, simple teaching. You're my friend, we're friends, we love each other. You follow me, we play together. You build on that. And then one day, as if by magic, the horse does everything for him. The closeness between Frédéric and his horses is such that the horse looks like he's trying to please him, finding a way to express and share the happiness at being at his side. To Frédéric, no horse will ever equal the presence and the charisma of Templado at this game.
The apprenticeship continues. Although promising, Kino has lots of work to do before appearing in the spotlights. With some horses, it can take up to eight years of training and complicity to reach that point. Doubt is the horse's enemy. As soon as he starts to doubt, he thinks something is bound to happen. He goes on the defensive. So you must banish all doubt. He has to think, yes, I know he's done that before. He jumped next to me. Now I'm preparing him for me to get on him. So I stand very close. You feel a tiny doubt and you reassure him. Now he's ready for the saddle. You try, in fact, to give him as much knowledge as he can take in and also to spark his interest. Because there are horses who aren't interested in knowing more, and then you accept the horse's will. Certain breeds of horse are better disposed to learning. The Lusitano, for example, with its innate sense of theater, is the main representative in the couple's family circle. My favorite of all is the Lusitano, because they're horses with charisma in a show, and that's exceptional. That's to do with the breed. They're horses with a fighting spirit that were bred for bullfighting. And they're a bit like warriors when they take to the track. They're very dynamic horses, yet they're also very elegant. In Frederick's eyes, Templado is the perfect example of a horse who loves to fill up the stage. A sensitive horse with a rebellious side, Templado was Frederick's faithful companion for 18 years. He was a horse who made us question ourselves, even in terms of our own lives. He really touched on the deep questions, and it's true that when a horse like Templado disappears, it hurts. For sure, Templado was more than a simple horse in a stable. And horses don't have the lifespans of humans, so you have to expect that, but you're never prepared for it. From then, he became a source of inspiration for Frederic. He embodied the ideal that a horse can reach. I was very inspired by Templado's bearing. I'm still wrapped up in the spirit of Templado, and I try to look for that bearing, that attitude he had. It was a little like the wind of freedom. So I really want to feel the wind, the wind in the mane. That's what I try to feel in the movement. He had a very special movement, which was to lower his head and then stretch out his forefoot. He was the dream horse, in fact. The horse which did everything, which could do everything. You only come across horses like that once in your life. I've had other horses that have given me something else as strong as that, but each horse is really something, something in particular. We'll never see another Templado. Despite the void left by Templado's passing, life goes on. <laughs> this is a competition fork. <laughs> a life punctuated by horses, meetings with family and friends, and tours. The time has come for Frederic and Magali to pack their bags again as a series of shows awaits in Portugal. For this extraordinary couple with a gypsy spirit, their passion for horses only makes sense when they share it with an audience. Oh yes, we do have the gypsy spirit. Those are our roots. We're lucky we met up because we have exactly the same disposition. If you tell us tomorrow you have to go God knows where, 
I'd say, OK, just give me five minutes to pack. I'll get the horse's protection boots, bridles and saddles, and off we go. <laughs> And these people who aren't scared of doing 12, 14, 15 hours a day, and then look after the horses, they do an enormous amount of work. It's a successful career, and deservedly so. Everything we discover with the animals, this relationship, we want to make it known. And the shows are a fine opportunity to do that. Our shows were always meant to show them off. When people come up and said, your horses are clearly happy, that's a lovely compliment. After the Cavalia adventure, the couple are looking to the future, their heads filled with projects and dreams. I think we still have other dreams after this. We're both lucky to be driven by exactly the same thing, our horses, which gives us so much inspiration. So we've plenty of lovely dreams to come. I think we have to keep our feet on the ground and say, hang on, we've got a team of horses here. This might not fit in with their dream. The idea is to find the right compromise between our plans, our dreams, and theirs, our common dream. Mm -hmm.